Thank y'all so much. I'm so excited to be here with you guys tonight. Um, thank you for having me. Before we get started, I just wanted to tell you that two of my middle school teachers are right down here. So uh, yeah, Miss Jones and Miss Jewel, they um, taught me science in the sixth grade. Oh, okay, stand up, stand up. Yes, everybody. <laughs> so thank you all so much for what you did for me and then um, I hope that uh, we have a good time tonight. So where are my Cobble County people? Yes. Not that I'm biased, but I'm gonna be very biased to you. So uh, I'm a Princeton, Kentucky native, as, as we talked about. Um, and right now I work for NASA. So um, I'm gonna ask you guys a lot of questions, okay? And you just holler out the answers um, when I ask you. So what do you think of when I say NASA? Space. Space. What about space? What, what's in space right now? Spaceships. Spaceships. Maybe some people. Yeah, there's other planets out there. Awesome. So I work in human space flight, which means um, when we put people into space, that's really what I concentrate on. So we'll get to the space part in just a minute. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about when I was growing up. So this is me in western Kentucky, right? I got my Caldwell County letter jacket. Um, this is one of my real nerdy senior pictures with all my NASA stuff. Um, I loved space always growing up. Um, I got the um, opportunity to go to the Kennedy Space Center. Has anybody ever been to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida? Have you been down there? Yeah, it's real close to Disney World. If you ever go to Disney World, convince your parents to go over to the Kennedy Space Center. That's where we launch our American rockets. So I got to see some shuttle flights go off when I was a kid, and they're still launching rockets down there. You never know when you're going to get to see one. Um, I also played a little bit of basketball, not a whole lot. My career was pretty short-lived. Um, I played a lot of soccer, though, and then, um, of course, grew up on the lake and loved being here in western Kentucky. So I am now a mechanical engineer. I went to the University of Kentucky. Um, what do you guys think of when, you say, when I say an engineer? What does an engineer do? Make you make things. I like to say engineers solve problems, right? What, what else do they do? Maybe test equipment and build stuff. So inside this spacesuit is a lady named Christina Cook. She's in space right now. Um, she just did a spacewalk not too long ago. And I put this picture in here because she's an engineer too. She's an electrical engineer. And um, when she got the call that she was gonna get to be an astronaut, she actually worked for NOAA. Do you all know what NOAA does? N-O-A-A? -A? Okay, that's the National Ocean, let me see if I can spit it out. I'm not good at all these words. National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Association. So that's a lot of words to say that she worked with the oceans and with the weather. NOAA's also the organization that tracks Santa Claus on Christmas Eve, okay? So she worked for NOAA in, uh, on an island called the American Samoa. Do you know where American Samoa is? No, it's way out in the Pacific Ocean. So that's where she worked as an engineer, working with the ocean, and then got the call that she could be an astronaut. So these are all things that are opportunities for you if you um, pursue a career in STEM. There's so many things that you can do as an engineer. This is my friend, Dr. Serena Anand Chancellor. She's also an engineer. Um, after she got her undergraduate degree, she went on to be a medical doctor and then became um, an astronaut. Uh, she was in space last year for 196 days. Have you all ever done anything for 196 days? That's a pretty long time, right? Yeah. So she was in space that long, and while she was up there, she got to do so many science experiments. And one of them was actually science on herself. So she would take pictures of her of her eyeballs and send them back to the teams in Houston and they did a whole lot of science experiments to figure out um, when she's in space how her eyeballs were changing shape and what they would do um, when she got back to Earth. So that was one of the big experiments that she did as a medical doctor and as an astronaut. So let's get back to my story a little bit. Um, I went to UK. Do we have any Cats fans here? Anybody a Wildcat fan? All right, so go Cats. I went to UK and um, got a degree in mechanical engineering, like I said earlier. And while I was there, 
I got to do this um, internship kind of thing called a cooperative education program. So what happened is I would go to school for a semester and then I would go down to the Kennedy Space Center and work for a semester. And then I would go to school for a semester and then go back to work for a semester. So it took me a little bit longer to graduate from college, but I got to um, get really hands-on with things like the launch pad and the crawler and the vehicle and to see really how an engineer puts all of these pieces together to build this big equipment. So one thing that you might think of is, um, I, I worked on ground support equipment. That's what I did at, at the Kennedy Space Center. So one thing that you could think about is, has anybody driven past a, like a construction site? Have you ever driven past a construction site? Okay, what do you see on a construction site? So like big machinery, maybe a crane, that kind of stuff. You're moving big beams around and, and building these big buildings, that kind of stuff. Well, that's what I did as an engineer. I would help um, the engineers there try to figure out, well, what size of a beam needs to go into this building so that it doesn't fall down and hurt anybody? Or what piece of equipment can pick up this really big thing and move it over there and do it safely without hurting anybody? So that was a really cool thing that I got to do um, when I was in school at UK. So this is what I do now. I work in mission control um, for the International Space Station. This is actually a picture of the room that I work in. Um, so that gentleman there in the white shirt, that's the flight director that's in charge of that mission control room right now, well, when this picture was taken. Um, and we are monitoring the International Space Station 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So right now, as we're sitting in this room, there is a flight director and a flight control team um, sitting in mission control in Houston, making sure that everything is going A-OK -okay with the International Space Station. When we call this sitting on console. When we're on console and mission control, we have three primary job functions. The first one is to make sure that we keep our astronauts alive. So our primary job function is to watch the, the spacecraft and make sure that nothing goes wrong, and if something does go wrong, how we can help the astronauts uh, stay safe while they're up there. The second thing that we prioritize is how to keep the vehicle um, healthy. So we have a state-of-the-art laboratory up there, right? And we're trying to make sure that at any given time, we can do all of the science experiments that we need to do. So we've got to keep that vehicle healthy. And then our third priority we call mission success. So that's all of the things that NASA wants us to do on the International Space Station that keeps it going, that makes our mission successful. So those are our three main job functions in mission control. And this is what I like to call my baby, the International Space Station. Does this picture, does that look like a real picture or something that a computer drew? Yeah, that's a real live picture, y'all. So when the space shuttle would come visit the space station, um, it would dock right there in the front, and then um, one time when it was undocking, some of the astronauts got some cameras out and took pictures of the space station. So how big is that space station? Yeah, it's as big as a football field. You see that NASA football field right there? So that's how big your space station is. And it is going 17,000 500 miles an hour all around the earth and it is going around the earth every 90 minutes. Is that kind of hard to understand a little bit? 17,500 miles an hour every 90 minutes? Okay, so we're going to do a little exercise to um, try to explain how that works. So I need three volunteers. Oh boy. All right. How about you right here? Yep. Mm -hmm. And you right there in the middle? Yep. And how about one up here? Yep, right here? Yep. No? Okay. I need one more. One more. <laughs> how about uh, way up there in the back? Yep. Good. All right. All right. So between you three, somebody has to be the sun, and somebody's the earth, and somebody's the space station. Um, I want to be the earth. You want to be the earth? Okay. I'll be the sun. You'll be the sun? Okay, you're the space station then. Okay, so can you go stand, son, can you go stand right there in the middle? Okay, 
And you're the Earth, right? Come back over here. So the Earth is 93 million miles away from the sun, right? So that's, that's probably pretty good, right? It's like 93 million. That's good? OK. All right, so how um, quickly does the Earth go around the sun? How often do we go around the sun one time? 365 days? OK, so slowly start walking around the sun. OK, so the Earth's going around the sun. It's taking her 365 days a year, 365 days to get a year. So you're the space station. All right, here's the space station right here. So what's the space station going around? The Earth. OK, so then you've got to go around the Earth. But as she goes around once every year, you got to go around once every 90 minutes. Can you do that? So you, you're gonna, and the Earth's got to come way over here, way over here. OK. Yep. Every 90 minutes. Yep. Good. Awesome. So that is orbital mechanics, y'all. Can you say orbital mechanics? Orbital mechanics. Can you say that? You just got a lesson in orbital mechanics. OK, you guys can stop. Does so everybody uh, have a little better idea how, how fast the space station goes around the Earth? OK, good. Thank you guys so much. Good job. OK, so also about the space station, think of it like a, like a six-bedroom house. It's got two bathrooms and um, three bathrooms sometimes, two bathrooms, and some gym equipment. We have a treadmill and like a weightlifting machine and also a state-of-the-art laboratory for them to do uh, science experiments in. And of course, I've been there for the last 12 years and I work over there in Houston, Texas. Does everybody see Mission Control Houston? You see it over there? Way over there? Let's see how I point it. Yep. Right here? Mission Control Houston? All right. Um, so it is an international space station, which means that we work with our partners all across the world. And uh, I get to talk regularly with my friends in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, our Marshall Space Flight Center there. Has anybody been to Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama? Yeah, it's such a cool place if you get the opportunity. They are building real live rockets there. So if you get the opportunity to go there, it's a really cool place. So I talk to my friends in Huntsville, Alabama quite a bit. They're running a lot of science experiments. I also talk to my friends in Munich, Germany, and in Scuba, Japan, which is just north of Tokyo, and also in Moscow. And most of us speak English, which is really helpful for me because I don't speak any of their languages. But um, our friends in, in Moscow, they speak Russian, and we talk to them through an interpreter. Does everybody know what an interpreter is? Yeah, what's an interpreter? So like I speak English, and then the interpreter changes that to Russian, and then my Russian um, colleagues can understand what I'm trying to say. Does that make sense? Everybody know what an interpreter is? OK. So I have learned a couple of Russian words. Would you all like to learn some Russian? Yeah. yeah? Is anybody in here a native Russian speaker? OK, I got caught by that the other day, so. <laughs> all right. All right, so um, ha, uh, can you say da? Da. da? Da is yes. Yes. Da. So then what's the opposite of yes? Nyet. Can you say nyet? Nyet. So da and nyet. OK. And so then one more word, right? <laughs> da and nyet. You guys are getting good at that. OK, so you want to learn how to say thank you? Thank you is spasiba. Spasiba. You got it? Spasiba. So when your parents or your teachers or whoever's going to help you with dinner tonight and you say, spasiba, thank you, right? Da, net, and spasiba. You guys are awesome. All right, so let's get back. OK, so I started um, in Houston, Texas as a flight controller um, called an operations support officer. Um, do I have any uh, people from Paducah here? Are you from Paducah? OK, great. So when I first got to work, my very first day at work, um, I met this gentleman here in the corner. His name is Terrence Williams, and he's from Paducah. So my very first day at work, I got a little piece of home. So that felt pretty good. So Terrence and I um, worked together as operations support officers. And what we did in mission control is we helped build the space station. So the OSOs, we call them OSOs, we call ourselves OSOs. 
um, are responsible for the mechanisms that bolts the space station together. So you remember that big space station, it's the size of a football field? We could only bring it up one piece at a time. And as the pieces would come up, we'd have to bolt them together, turn, turn screws and bolt them together. So that's what the OSOs do. And then also, I was responsible for maintenance on board the space station. What do you guys think of when I say maintenance? What do you think of? Like fixing things, things that are broken. So if you've got this big six bedroom house, two bathrooms, an air conditioner, that kind of stuff, things break quite a bit, right? So I was responsible for things like oxygen production, right? If you're living inside of a tin can, you need to breathe oxygen. And so if the oxygen maker broke, we'd have to make sure that we could fix it so the astronauts could breathe. So when you breathe in, you breathe in oxygen. What do you breathe out? <laughs> Carbon dioxide. Man, you guys are so smart. So if you're living inside of a tin can, what do you do with the carbon dioxide? That's pretty hard, right? You got to get rid of it somehow. So we have a carbon dioxide removal assembly. That was also one of the things that I got to work on a whole lot. And then we also um, have uh, what we call a water reclamation system. So water is really heavy, which means that it's kind of expensive to launch it all the time, clean water. But you have to have clean water, right? You gotta brush your teeth, you gotta drink it, you gotta use it to flush your potty, that kind of stuff. Um, so what we do is the astronauts um, drink the water and then their bodies use the water and then their bodies let go of the water and then it goes into a machine that cleans the water and then it goes back into their coffee and they drink the water again. <laughs> Is that weird? That's what the earth does for you naturally. It just takes a very long time to do it. So we figured out a way to do it a lot faster so that we can have some extra water. <laughs> it's true, guys. It's pretty clean. Okay, you still with me? Okay, another couple of jobs that I got to do in Mission Control, one is um, talk to the astronauts. So I got to be a Capcom for a while and talk to the astronauts while they were in space. Such a fun job. Um, and one time I got to meet George Bush when he came through Mission Control. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah, that was a pretty good day. And we're all wearing red because the flight director in charge that day, Mr. Royce Renfrew, this guy right here, he's real superstitious about red and that bad things always happen on the spacecraft when you wear red, so we were playing a joke on him. And then we all got caught because the president came. All right, so last year um, I got selected as a flight director along with these guys. Um, so flight, human space flight has been going on since about 1960. Um, in the early days. How many flight directors do you think there have been for NASA since 1960? Oh, you guys are pretty close, right? In the 90s? <laughs> I'm 92, right? When the rest of my class gets certified, they will have been 97. So I'm number 92. You guys did your homework. This is amazing. And we've talked a little bit about what uh, flight directors do. This is me here in the corner taking uh, over the shift. So Jeff Radigan is um, giving me my handover. Like I said, we, we sit there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there's always somebody there. And so we do three shifts a day and I was coming on to shift and Jeff was leaving. This is actually my, um, my first shift. So I was a little bit nervous in this picture, but that's okay. And these, are the six humans that we take care of that are off planet right now. So the planet Earth is six fewer people because these guys are in space. So if you start from left to right over here, that's Dr. Drew Morgan. He's um, active duty Army. Um, he's also a medical doctor in the Army and an astronaut. And then this guy is uh, Alexander Swartzoff. He's a cosmonaut from Russia. This is his, I think, second flight, maybe third. And then Luca Parmitano, Luca's from Italy. He's with us through the European Space Agency. And uh, he's the commander of the space station right now. So he's the guy in charge up there on that ship. And then you've got Oleg Skropochka. Um, he's also from Russia, he's a cosmonaut. Uh, you have Dr. Jessica Mir. She was a biologist uh, before she became an astronaut, a real cool lady from Maine. 
And then uh, you have Christina Crook that we talked about earlier that was in the spacesuit. Remember, she's an electrical engineer and worked for NOAA, was in America, Samoa. She's such a, such a cool lady. She grew up in North Carolina. She's a real, real cool girl. So um, they are Expedition 61. That's what these um, Roman numerals right here. Expedition 61 on the International Space Station. So they're going to be up there for a little while. Three of them come home, I think, in March is the next uh, time that they come home. And um, they are doing some really cool science experiments up there. So this is Dr. Meir. She is watering plants in this picture. Why would she be watering plants? Yeah, go ahead. Why do you think we need to water plants in space? Yeah, we're trying to make them grow, yeah. So um, when you try to water plants in space, right, you can't just pour out water from a watering can. It won't go anywhere because you're in microgravity and you don't have gra gravity to pull the, the water out of the watering can. So they use this bag, it's kind of, she might be using a syringe actually, but um, sometimes you use a bag, it looks kind of like a Capri Sun bag. It's like this big and it's got a straw in it and you can push water out of it and the water comes out in these balls and it, Water wants to stay as a ball in space because there's no force on it to pull it apart. And so we're trying to figure out if water wants to be a ball, how do we grow plants? Because if we want to go beyond low Earth orbit, which is where they are at 250 miles up, if we want to go to the moon or we want to go to Mars or beyond, how do we grow our own food? And so she's doing an experiment to try to figure out how we grow food. And those are mustard greens, Mizuno mustard greens that she's working on there. Uh, here's Christina. She is actually working on our water system. So the, the, the piece of equipment that uh, distills the urine actually um, broke a couple of weeks ago and Christina is working on how to fix it. You think that's a fun job? No, she's smiling though, she's in space. She gets to float around while she does it. All right, this is Drew and Luca, and they are uh, making some new tools for when they go out on a spacewalk in a couple of weeks. But I put this picture up there because there's um, some really common things that you can find in that picture. Do you guys see anything that you recognize in this picture? Yeah, there's duct tape, I heard duct tape. It's over here somewhere. There's some more tape here. Here's, a, here's just a regular tape measure right here. What's this? Do y'all have one of these at home? That's a tablet. Yeah. There's a tablet. Yeah, there's laptop computers up here. There's some sticky notes and some scotch tape. Do y'all have a lot of these things at home? Yeah. So these are astronauts in space doing really important work. They're getting ready for their spacewalk, but they're using a lot of the tools that we have at home, right? Like a tape measure and tape and, and getting, their, getting themselves ready for their next adventure going out on a spacewalk. This is Drew giving Sasha a haircut. So if you think about you're going to be up there for six months, and some of us with longer hair maybe could go six months without getting a haircut. Um, but these fellas, uh, they like their hair pretty short. So what happens if, is they've got a set of clippers that they put on a vacuum cleaner hose. So the vacuum cleaner, when you clip your hair, it takes all of that hair away and it doesn't get in your eyes or up your nose or anything like that because when you cut it, it's just going to go everywhere because you're in space and there's no gravity to pull it down to the ground. And this is what movie night looks like on board Space Station. Okay, so they're up there for six months. So they get the weekends off. Sometimes they get holidays off. Um, and they have, uh, what would they do during their downtime? So this actually I think is from the Super Bowl last year. Um, we, we sent some TV up to them so that they could watch the Super Bowl. But they have a little projector and a screen and they can watch some movies. We send some movies up there for them. And so um, we've got Thanksgiving, oh, does that, oops. Hold on. We've got Thanksgiving coming up, so one of the th they'll probably have Thanksgiving off, and they'll um, probably spend it all together and make a meal together. And they do a lot of sort of regular things that we do on our downtime here on Earth. Um, this picture I always put in because people always have questions about it. Does anybody know what this is? It's the potty. Yes, it is. Yep, that's your potty right there. So um, do you guys want me to tell you how to use it? Okay, yeah. Usually you do. Usually you do. Okay. So you lift up this white lid right here. This white lid right here. Okay. 
and you kind of float backwards really close to it, but you don't touch it. You just kind of hover over the top of it. And then down here, you strap your feet in to hold you still. So you can hold yourself still over the potty. And then um, this is a hose right here that has a funnel on the end of it. And um, this is where number one goes, and this is where number two goes. And that's how you use potty. So you go in and you flip on a switch um, because your potty has to have power and you turn a fan on and that little fan um, pulls all of the air inside of that hose and in that bucket and along with the air comes all of your number one and your number two and you want it to pull it away from your body. And then when you're done, there's a whole bag of huggy wipes right here. Clean yourself up. And that's how you go potty in space. <laughs> You guys are quiet after that one. I just heard an eh, eh. Okay, there's Christina. She's about to take some pictures out the window. She's wearing sunglasses because um, the earth is really, really, really bright, uh, right? We've got sunlight from the sun, and it's coming off the earth, and our earth is gorgeous and blue, and it's really bright, so she's got to wear sunglasses a lot of times um, to take pictures. And then, of course, here's Drew in every astronaut's favorite place to hang out. We call this a cupola. Um, that's because that's the shape of the windows. It's a whole bank of windows. So if you think about um, that space station that we looked at earlier and how it's flying around the Earth, on the, on the bottom part of the space station is where these windows are, and so they're Earth-facing. And the astronauts can go in there and, and just watch the Earth go by. So here's a couple of things that I wanted you guys to know before we leave, right? Um, my job is really cool. I love my job. And if any of you guys are interested in coming down to Houston, Texas and being flight controllers, you just let me know, okay? And we'll figure out how to make that happen. But I want you to know that along the way, um, it is highly likely that you're not going to be good at something. It's just part of life. I'm that way also. But I'm going to tell you just to keep going. Because if you've got a dream and you've got something that you wanted to do, like how I always wanted to work in space, I want you to know that you can and that you should. And along the way, if you can find a mentor, somebody that um, will spend some time with you and talk to you about the things that you like to do and how to achieve them, um, definitely find yourself a mentor. So the secret to success is just to keep going. All right, guys, that's what I really want you to take away from today and also how cool the International Space Station is because I love it. So right before I leave you, I want everybody to look at this spot the station. So if you have a cell phone or if your parents have a cell phone, you can go to that website and it will send you a text message anytime the space station is about to fly over. And you can go outside and you can see it. You don't have to have binoculars. You don't have to have a telescope. You can just walk outside and see it. So you go to that website, and you type in your zip code for wherever you live, and it will send you a text message for how to see the space station. All right? Thank you guys so much for having me, and we're going to do a couple of, of questions. Yeah.